In this next series, I will be demonstrating how I make a case for one of my wristwatches. And the techniques that I'll be showing are a combination of the Daniels method and also techniques that I've developed since I'm making my very first pocket watch case almost 25 years ago. The cases are formed from three bands, one for the bezel, one for the middle, and then finally one for the back. It is on the middle band that I solder the lugs which will hold the strap. And to form each band, what I will do is roll out a piece of gold into a strip and then bend it into a circle, solder the joint together and then drive that roughly shaped circle into a tapered former to form a perfect circle. After this stage, I will then turn or machine the uh, ring into the profile that I require for the shape of the case and uh, then I can solder the lugs into position and do any drillings in the case that will take the uh, stem or any other fitting that I require on the case. These are the drawings that I've um, done for this particular watch and this is a unique piece. Basically it's a one-off wrist watch designed completely for the client. There is no other piece like this and it's a completely new and original piece of British watchmaking. So the case is uh, 42 millimeters diameter and the material that we're using is 18 karat red gold. The specification for the watch is it has a one minute tourbillon fitted with a coaxial escapement and we have a retrograde calendar mechanism here, an up and down mechanism, minutes, hours and seconds. So the various drawings that I've created uh, is basically one for each component. So we have the bezel and um, it tells me, it shows me the uh, diameter of the glass seal and the various heights that are needed for clearance of the dial and so on. And then at the top here, I've calculated the dimensions that I need to roll the gold out to from a six millimeter square wire. And um, when we're calculating the length, instead of using 3.142 uh, times the diameter to work out the length, we always times it by 3.3. And that 3.3 just gives me an extra bit of material just to uh, cut down and make sure we get the correct diameter of ring. So that's the bezel. Uh, the next one is the uh, the middle and um, for this particular one this is where I show the positioning of the stem and also the positioning of the calendar corrector pusher. So we have the correct angular orientation here and then on this drawing we have the heights in relation to the center line of the band. The uh, positioning of lugs are obviously here and then we have these holes which are either drilled for clearance of screws or threaded for screws and this is how the bezel and the back are mounted onto the middle. The back of the case again fairly straightforward. Uh, the only real difference here is the cutouts for the screw heads of the screws. Again we show the glass seat uh, and seal for the eye gasket and then the various clearances. This is a enlarged, obviously enlarged uh, drawing of the case side and what I'm trying to do with this one, this particular case, is to alter the proportions of it and in my previous unique piece cases what I did was to fit this band here onto the back and then also onto the bezel here. And um, what this did was it created, if you like, a rather blank, large, wide, blank space here in the middle of the case. And this large, blank space, I felt, created a lot of depth on the case and gave the illusion that the case was very thick. 
So what I've done with this particular case is to move these bands onto the middle, onto the middle band of the case. And what I'm hoping this will achieve is that it will create, obviously, it will create a shorter um, depth of material here and it'll create the illusion that the case is actually slimmer than it is. And uh, these red lines here, they are going to be the joints or the points of meeting between the bezel and the middle and then the back and the middle. So we'll see how this case works out. The final drawing is of the mechanism inside the case and showing the various clearances that we need to consider. So the con we always look at the tip of the minute hand and the lowest point of the sapphire crystal to make sure there's adequate clearance there and then obviously the chatons um, to make sure that they adequately clear the underside of the sapphire crystal which is in the back of the watch. And again we just note down the heights of the stem and the calendar corrector in relation to the middle of the case. Here we have a piece of 18 karat red gold which is 6 millimeters square and 330 millimeters long and what I'm going to now do is bend the ring for the middle uh, case band. Now we have the um, ring in a rough set shape of a circle. What I had to do was to soften the ring a little bit more because it was just becoming too tough. So I heated it up with the flame and then quenched it to give it some softness. So now what I'm going to do is to form it into a, a better circle by putting it into the uh, press here and squashing it into this tapered former here and uh, that'll give me a nice circle. So it takes several goes to get it right, and um, it's way out of flat at the moment, but we'll worry about that at a later date. So just turning it round, Bringing the press down, and giving it a good crush, basically. So it's becoming a better circle now, um, but it's still, uh, due to the ed edges which are ragged, um, it's not meeting and bonding together very well. So what I'm going to do is just clean up these two faces. I'll cut through with a saw, and then we'll have another go at compressing it a little further. So we've cleaned up the edges and now we're just going to give it another good old crush in there and uh, reduce that diameter and try and force it into more of a circle. Now, we're getting closer now, it's getting into a smarter circle, uh, we just need to keep an eye on the diameter to make sure we don't go too small, but it's probably ready for another annealing just to soften it, just to really make sure it's a nice tight circle. So we are in the um, heating room and what I'm just going to demonstrate now is the annealing of the gold and basically we have to heat this to a cherry red, wait for it then to turn into a black colour before quenching it into the water just to take the heat right out of it. So place a ring on there, use a very large torch for this just so that we can get the heat into it quickly but um, give it a light and stand back basically. And it's starting to take the heat now, the uh, mats are glowing red the gold is also starting to glow. Uh, what we need to make sure is that we're not going to melt the gold 
but really it's a large piece of metal at this stage so it's still okay and just ease down the heat a bit so we can gauge the temperature of the gold and that's still good a bit more heat and I think that's okay I think that's a good probably a bit over cherry red so we'll just turn off the heat a bit now wait for the temperature to drop to what we call a black colour and um, then we can uh, drop it into the water so it's nearly at the colour now and then we just pick it up with the pliers throw it in the water and that now should be at a it'll be in a softened state now so that we can just uh, give it a bit more forcing into a cleaner circle and just to uh, improve the whole shape of it